What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to another short video looking at some tips and tricks for the EOS R5. This time we'll be taking a quick look at the screen and viewfinder brightness and color settings and how you should consider setting them up for your camera. As with many of these videos, the settings I'm going to cover here, cover here also apply to the EOS R5's siblings, such as the R6 and EOS R. However, as with many of these videos, I'm going to talk about some actual measurements that I've made on my camera, and so they may be specific very much to the EOS R5 and possibly even only my camera. In other words, they may not reflect the performance of the display that you have on your camera if you don't have an EOS R5. As always, your mileage may vary. So with that out of the way, let's dive in. To change the screen or viewfinder brightness, you'll want to head over to the Setup 3 menu page. Now, I've already covered the first setting on this page in my video on switching between the screen and the viewfinder. If you want to see some more detail about that, I'll put a link in the description to that video. The first setting we're interested in here is screen brightness. And if you enter the screen brightness menu, you'll be presented with a few things. Specifically, there will be a step wedge and a picture. Now, the picture will be the last image that you have on your card that you currently have in your camera. If you don't have a card in the camera or the card is empty, then the upper left two thirds or so of the screen will just be black. Unfortunately, with the EOS R series, including the R3, Canon decided to get rid of the light sensor and remove the auto brightness mode for the screen. So you'll need to adjust the screen by brightness manually for whatever works best in your situation. In fact, it might be useful to add this to a My Menu setting, which I can put a link to a video on that too. Below the image is the screen brightness scale, and on the R5, this ranges from zero or from one to seven. You can adjust the brightness either by tapping the number on the slider, tapping the brighter or darker buttons on either end of the slider, or turning either quick control dials to slide the indicator. Choosing the right brightness is partly a matter of taste, partly situational, and partly something you should be doing or using the step wedge to aid in doing. Now, if you've never used a step wedge to adjust the screen brightness, basically what you're looking for is to ensure that you can see all of the individual gradations or gray levels in the step wedge, both at the brightest and darkest settings. Now, this might not always be possible, and in fact, probably won't be possible at the highest brightness settings on the camera, but in general, that's what you're looking for. So in general, at least in my experience, a brightness level of three or four is typically adequate for indoor shooting. For night photography or for photography in dark interiors, it's advisable to set the brightness down to one or two. One is definitely gonna be where you want to be for like night landscapes. For outside daylight situations, you wanna crank the brightness all the way up to five, six, or seven. Moving down from the screen brightness setting, we come to the viewfinder brightness setting, and this does the same thing for the viewfinder as the previous setting does for the screen. Now, entering the viewfinder brightness menu will present you with a slightly different thing with a few differences compared to the screen brightness menu. First, and maybe more important, most importantly, there is an auto manual selection option. When the camera is set to auto mode, the camera uses the current light levels that it's metering in the scene to adjust the viewfinder's brightness automatically. The second option is manual mode, and this reveals a five position slider for the brightness level. Like the screen bright brightness settings, you can change the viewfinder brightness by tapping where you want it on the slider, tapping the brighter or darker buttons at either end, or using the quick control dials. However, the effect of adjusting the viewfinder brightness is only visible when you're looking through the viewfinder, so you'll have to do that to actually see what's going on. In general, you'll want to use the same reasoning as you do with the screen brightness, which is not too bright to be overly bright, not too dark to be hard to read, good enough or is bright enough to see all of the steps on the staff wedge is ideal. My personal preference is to set the viewfinder brightness to auto though, and let the camera adjust it. This way, I find that the viewfinder isn't overly bright in dark situations like, say, outside at night, and it's not overly dark in bright situations like being in the middle of the day. Moving along down the menu page, or the setup menu page, the next thing we come to is the screen viewfinder color tone setting. And this essentially adjusts the color temperatures for both displays. Entering the menu presents you with four options, warm, standard, 
cool one and cool two. Now the default here is standard and this is where I leave my camera set. The final color related setting is the fine tune viewfinder color tone entry. Entering this setting presents you with another test image, which again will be the last image you shot that's stored on your memory card, a grayscale step wedge, and a two-dimensional graphic representing the blue, amber, and green magenta color shifts that can be applied to the viewfinder. To change the viewfinder tune, fine tuning, use the multi-controller on the camera. As with the screen viewfinder color tone, I have mine set to the default of 00, zero as my viewfinder doesn't have any obvious problems coming from Canon. Now, since Canon has removed the brightness sensor from the EOS R series, they've also removed the easiest way for you to ensure that the screen remains readable in varying situations. And further, while the screen at the highest brightness levels aren't blindingly bright, you're also probably not going to want to leave the screen in that mode all the time either, for both power consumption reasons and because it would be really bright and potentially distracting inside in a darker environment. Fortunately, Canon has included a button function that will temporarily boost the screen's brightness to maximum. Now, I've already posted a video talking about customizing buttons, so I'll put a link to that in the description too. But the idea is, is that you can set the view uh, screen brightness to something that's fairly dark, a three or four maybe, and then boost it when you need to when you're shooting outside. Now, of course, this wouldn't be one of my videos without me digging into some crazy stuff in some esoteric way, uh, more than anybody reasonable probably would or should. So I pulled out my i1 Display 2 colorimeter and made some spot readings for the brightness and color temperature on the rear LCD. So to start with, I stepped through the four color modes. Standard corresponds nicely to a color temperature of about 6,500 Kelvin, though I found at high brightness levels, it did rise a bit to a bit over 6,600 Kelvin. Warm corresponded to around 4,900 Kelvin, though it varied a little bit. And finally, Cool 1 and Cool 2 corresponded to 8,000 and 9,200 Kelvin, respectively. The second thing I wanted to look at was the brightness and contrast ratios. And so for this test, I stepped through each of the seven brightness levels, measuring the output brightness using a completely white image in the camera review. What I found was that brightness level one corresponded to about 10 candela or per square meter or nits. Level two corresponded to about 35 nits. And brightness level three was 120 nits, which this is also incidentally the recommended brightness for display calibration for people who are calibrating their displays for making prints. I measured the brightness for level four at about 270 nits. And finally, five, six, and seven all measured out at the same 625 nits for the white image. It was interesting, I thought, that the last three bright levels, levels all had the same maximum output. However, looking at the step wedges, it appears that brightness level five is the last setting where the camera changes the actual backlight brightness, and six and seven appear to use the same backlight brightness, but adjust the contrast or gamma curve so that darker parts of the image are made lighter without making the screen brighter. Now, presumably this is done to make it easier to see shadow details and bright light since they will be brighter, but it does compromise the highlight details in image reviews. Now to put some perspective on this, 625 nits is around the typical brightness of an Apple iPhone 12, iPhone SE 2020, or iPad Pro 11 inch, screen when set to its maximum brightness setting. This is also just under a stop dimmer than most on-camera or most higher-end professional grade on-camera displays such as the Atomos Ninja 5 and of course some phones which easily will hit a thousand nits. Now 625 nits is usable in daylight conditions. A thousand or fifteen hundred would certainly be better or at least in theory would be better but again, this is where that removal of the light sensor and auto mode becomes somewhat problematic. If you have your camera set to something that's comfortable inside at 120 or 270 nits, the display is pretty much just too dim to be easily readable outside. It's passable in shade, but it's absolutely, un I won't say absolutely, it's quite a bit more difficult in full sun. So you either need to raise the brightness manually, and again, this might be a good thing to add to a My Menu setting page, 
or to set up a button to raise the brightness temporarily to max so that you can easily or more easily see what's going on when you're outside. Finally, as I said, I wanted to look at camera or contrast ratios. While the camera was set to brightness level 7, I measured the brightness of a black or solid black image and to get the black point of the display. And this time I measured a value of 0.68 candela per square meter using so using the black point and or the black brightness and white brightness. The camera's screen has an approximately 1000 to 1 contrast ratio. Mine specifically measured out at 920 to 1, but some variances usually or should be expected when you're talking about contrast ratios on LCD screens. This implies that the screen should be capable of displaying almost 10 stops of dynamic range when you're displaying or reviewing your images on it, which is, again, comparable to most good quality photographic grade monitors that aren't super high high end or HDR capable. Viewing angles are approximately 179 degrees, both vertically and horizontally, which indicates that Canon is using IPS panels for the display, so they should have good color reproduction, assuming everything else in the chain is well designed. Further, my testing with display performance settings in a previous video showed that the panel normally operates with a 30 hertz refresh rate when the camera is set to power saving, and, a, and, and when set to smooth, the display steps up to a full 60 hertz refresh rate. Finally, the last thing I wanted to look at was how the panel got along with uh, using polarized sunglasses, and this seems to work quite well. There is a color shift when the sun, uh, sunglasses and display are in the right alignment, but with every pair of polarized sunglasses I tested, the display remained visible in all orientations that I held the camera. So, that about wraps up screen brightness and color options for the EOS R5. If you found this useful, or at least a bit interesting, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you aren't already. R remember, you can't forget to unsubscribe later if you don't subscribe now. Finally, if you know somebody else who might find this useful, do them and me a favor and share it with them. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.